Hello and welcome to this presentation on behalf of Exeter City Council. My name is Debbie Franklin. I'm the Director of Tax at Peplos Limited and a Property Tax Specialist. And I'm just going to be running through a couple of the effects of COVID measures and assistance. So we'll be covering help that's available for everybody, uh, property income specific, holiday or serviced accommodation, property purchases, property sales, grants, funding and a few others. So help for all. So for all taxes, and I mean all taxes, you can make a time to pay request. There is a dedicated number for COVID related time to pay and it is on the slide. For self-assessment in particular, um, they immediately um, deferred the second payment on account that was due for 2019-20. So that would have been due 31 July 2020. It was deferred until the end of January, although you can pay it if you choose to, and some did. But bear in mind, please, that your January 2021 balancing payment will then be larger because you won't have made your second payment on account towards it. You can also look to reduce your payments on account for the following year. And of course, the first of those will be on January 2021. So your payments on account for 2021 will be based on your 1920 tax. And that will have had um, not a great deal of effect of COVID. So maybe your normal sort of profit and tax on that year. However, during 2021, you may have had some voids or bad debts. So you definitely need to look at whether you can reduce your payments on account to what you reasonably estimate that your um, tax liability will be for 2021. There is also now the ability, particularly for self-assessment, if your liability is under £30,000 and you have no other payment plans in place, you can opt to pay by instalments but there will be interest added. Now you can apply online for those paying instalments and the link is on the slide, or there is a dedicated number again, which is also on the slide. So property income, um, I expect a few of you are probably experiencing some bad debts during the COVID crisis. Uh, if you've not, then great, you're very lucky. How you claim those depends on what basis you prepare your tax return. Are you on the cash basis or the accruals basis? Because the cash basis you declare income actually received and expenses actually paid in the tax year. Accruals basis, you include your income earned in the tax year, not necessarily received, and your expenses incurred but not necessarily paid in the tax year. You may be on the cash basis if your rental income, gross rental income is under £150,000 a year. Now you can switch between those two bases, but you need to be careful in the year you switch that you don't double count any income or expense or miss any income and expense. So if, for example, you included anything in the prior year under the accruals basis, but it was not received or paid until the following year and you switch to the cash basis, you must exclude those items because you've already included them in the previous year. So as regards bad debts, well, on the cash basis, you get them automatically because if you don't receive it, then you don't include them. However, on the accruals basis, you have in theory earned them. So you can only claim them as a bad debt if they have proved to be irrecoverable. Um, and you tend to have to be able to demonstrate that you have taken some steps to try to recover them. Um, but of course, if your tenant has disappeared, left, and you're not going to get the rent, then I would argue that is irrecoverable. And you can, of, uh, of course, include legal fees to pursue those debts, so court fees, um, solicitors fees, etc. <coughs> On a similar vein, your mortgage holiday, um, how you account for that depends if you're on the cash or the accruals basis. Now, mortgage holidays have now been extended to a maximum of six months. 
I would say um, with caution because a few clients have now looked to refinance some of their properties with a different lender and have immediately been asked, have they accepted any COVID assistance and have they taken any mortgage holidays? So if you're on a cash basis, well, your interest hasn't been paid, has it? Um, so you may need to check how your lender has dealt with that interest. Um, but generally, if you haven't paid something, you can't claim it on a cash basis. Whereas on an accruals basis, well, you have incurred it because the lender is not letting you off that interest. So you have incurred that interest. It, it has been added to your mortgage and will likely increase your payments going forward. So holiday and serviced accommodation. I don't know how many of you do this, but I know it's growing in popularity. And in order to benefit from the better tax treatments for this type of letting, there are qualifying criteria. And it has to be that it's available for 210 days, actually let for 105, and must not be occupied by the same person for more than 31 days for more than five months of the year. Now, I know certainly with a few um, serviced accommodation providers I've spoken to during the COVID crisis, because they couldn't get any um, holiday stays, they offered their accommodation to NHS workers. It's likely they would have failed that last test. Um, and that could be a problem for them because at the moment, there has been no published guidance to say they will allow during the COVID period um, a, a grace on that. They just haven't said that. Presumably, you know, also you may have failed the 210 days let if you had because it wasn't available for holiday let because you had a long term NHS worker in there potentially. Now, if you failed the actual letting days, if you've got more than one unit and overall over all your units, if you average it, you made it, you can do that. You can still tick you actually let for 105 days in the tax year. But with the actual let, if you fail that, but you qualified in the previous year, you can make something known as a period of grace election. So if, for example, you qualified in 2019-20 on your actual let days, and you still meet the 210 days and the occupation days, you could make a period of grace election for failing the actual let in 2020-21 and 2021-22. You can only do it for two years though. And as I say, at the moment, they have looked at extending um, their sort of time limits for things like non-UK residents, um, number of days and also the stamp duty three year rule for replacement of main residents and escaping the 3%. For both of those, they've actually issued some guidance to say in these circumstances, if you exceed these time limits due to COVID, we'll still permit your claim. I've not seen anything yet on the holiday let serviced accommodation criteria. Also on holiday let service accommodation, if any of you are big enough to be VAT registered on that, the 5% um, VAT rate on hospitality has now been extended to the 31st of March next year. If you're on the flat rate scheme for holiday service accommodation, you would normally be paying on your gross income at 10.5%. That has reduced to 0%, so you will be paying no VAT whatsoever to HMRC. In addition, there was the ability for VAT due before the end of June to be deferred. They have also said that that um, ability to pay that before March 2021 will be extended to March 2022 and there will be no interest added to that. In addition, for holiday lets and serviced accommodation, as you probably know, you should be on business rates, not council tax. And if that is the case and you were 
eligible to get small business rates relief, you should have received your £10,000 grant. Um, in addition, you've also got a 12-month payment holiday if you aren't, aren't entitled to small business rates relief. So property purchases. Um, the property market at the moment is still very buoyant, probably due to this. Um, there has been an increase in the nil rate ban of stamp duty land tax to £500,000 temporarily until the 31st of March next year. However, for landlords, uh, the 3% st surcharge still applies. So if you own more than one property, when you buy a property, you will still pay the 3% surcharge, even if the property price is below £500,000. Now, this nil rate band increase does actually provide an opportunity um, for shifting ownership of um, property assets between spouses. Because when you shift property ownership between spouses and therefore can shift income to the lower tax paying spouse, CGT is not an issue. It's no gain, no loss between spouses, so not a problem. But there has always potentially been a problem with stamp duty. Because if you shift a percentage of the property ownership to your lower taxpayer spouse to have them taxed on more of the income, you are also deemed to be shifting a percentage of any secured debt on that property, so the mortgage. So whenever we were doing this for tax planning, we used to say, right, what is the percentage of um, the mortgage debt that's moving? Apply that to the mortgage debt and say, is that above £40,000? If it was, stamp duty applied. Then there was a change in the budget that said the extra 3% surcharge does not apply for transactions between spouses. So from that date, we were looking at the percentage of mortgage debt that moved and said, is it above £125,000? And if it wasn't, then absolutely fine. If it was, there could be some stamp duty. And bear in mind, if you're transferring more than one property interest at a time, you have to link them. So you would add together all of the debt on all of the mortgages for the properties you were moving, the percentage. And of course, now there's an opportunity because if you want to shift some income to a lower tax paying spouse for whatever reason and therefore have to shift a percentage of ownership, the percentage of mortgage debt being shifted up until 31st of March 2021 has to be below 500,000 because that's currently the nil rate band because the 3% surcharge doesn't apply to spousal transfers. So I think you know, there is a bit of an opportunity there to do a bit of tax planning on your income. Um, please also, of course, bear in mind the three year rule for replacing your main residence. As I say, they have allowed a bit of relaxation in there, but only if you can show that you have been prevented from selling it or repurchasing one within the three year period because of events beyond your control. So the fact that maybe you couldn't get any viewings during COVID, that would count. The fact that you were hanging on to see if the market dropped during COVID would not count. Property sales. Um, I just really, not COVID related specifically, but I also wanted to, to sort of draw your attention to this. For capital gains tax, for UK residential property sold, there is now a requirement to do a capital gains tax return and make payment within 30 days of completion. There is a requirement for that. Now, due to COVID, they did um, bring in a relaxation on the filing deadline. 
um, but that expired on 31st of July. So at the moment, unless they extend that, if you did file late, you would incur a penalty. They did not extend the deadline for payment, so you still would have been incurring interest. Now this 30 day payment and return is not required only if it is again covered by private residence relief. It is a loss, you make a loss on sale or you have losses brought forward or the gain is within your annual exemption. So in effect, if there is no tax to pay in general under those specific rules, you will not be required to do the 30 day return. Even if you do the 30 day return and make a payment, and if you don't have all the exact details, get as close as you can and make a payment on account. You see, for example, if you sold a property at the beginning of the tax year and did your 30 day return, well, you might not be sure how much of your um, gain will be in your basic rate band and your higher rate band. So at 18 or 28 percent, because you don't actually know as yet what your income is going to be for the tax year. So you've just got to do a best guesstimate, put it in, make the payment. You still then have to report that gain on your tax return with the actual amounts and details. Pay any additional tax because you underpaid or get a refund if you overpaid. Um, just a bit on grants, uh, a lot of people received grants during the COVID um, first couple of um, rounds of assistance. Grants are taxable. They are. Um, they're not usually subject to VAT as you have re you have made no supply in receiving them. There's no sub vatable supply for them to attach to, but they are taxable income. And that includes the business rates grant, the furlough, the self-employed income support scheme grant, and of course, unfortunately, landlords, even holiday let landlords, were not entitled to this because they did not complete a self-employment page or a partnership trading page on a tax return. And also any discretionary grants that have, have been made, um, they are all taxable and need to be included as taxable income. The one thing I would say on discretionary grants is, you know, keep Googling it because more and more grants are being made available all the time and you may just qualify um, and for the sake of you know half an hour spending filling in an online application it's worth doing so as I say they're all becoming available all the time keep an eye on and check with the, your local authority what grants they may be able to give you funding so the bounce back loans or the C bills as they're known loans have been extended to the 31st of January. Now, if you've taken one of these, will the interest when it starts to become payable be allowable? Well, again, that completely depends on the purpose you've used it for. So you need to see, have I used it for an allowable purpose? I have, yes, I can claim it. Um, if, for example, it was for refurbing um, your portfolio, then because it's been used on residential property, the normal, what we know as Clause 24, finance cost restrictions would apply to it. Now, the, this funding was fairly easy to apply for, particularly bounce back loans and particularly when they were first being offered. Um, I would caveat that with follow up checks are going to come. Um, it is estimated that there was a huge amount of fraud in applying for these loans. Either people applying for loans for businesses that were set up as a sham just to get the loans, um, people inflating their turnover in order to get the highest amount of loan pro possible, and people using it for purposes that it wasn't designed for. You can't take a bounce back loan and go and buy a new car. Uh, well, I suppose you could if you're a taxi driver, because actually you would need that to keep your business going during COVID. Um, 
Now, if you've taken a bounce back loan or a C-bills loan, the amount you've actually received is not, of course, taxable because it's debt. So please don't include that in your income. Now, just a few other bits and bobs. Um, initially, the filing deadline for accounts at Companies House, which is nine months after the company's year end, you could apply um, for an extension under COVID. Um, now they have automatically extended all filing deadlines at Companies House by three months. And if you go on um, the Companies House website and look for your company information, you will see that the new filing date is on there. However, whilst the filing deadline at Companies House has been extended, the corporation tax payment date hasn't. That is still nine months from the year end. So actually, in order to calculate what tax you've got to pay, you would have had to have done your accounts within nine months anyway. Um, so I suspect that many companies who have taken advantage of the three month extension at Companies House will be late paying their corporation tax. Um, there has as yet been no extension announced for the filing of self-assessment tax returns. Now, from a purely selfish point of view, I really hope they do because um, we are frantically busy doing things like furlough claims and self-employment claims assistance, etc., etc. So we are very busy, but also um, we found that because clients don't necessarily want to get our bill, they are perhaps not as quick getting their tax information into us this year. So I am hoping that they will give some sort of extension to that. So I think it's, that's a case of watch this space. But again, all this um, assistance and grants and furloughs has got to be paid back into the economy, into the, into the coffers at some point. So I think I would say watch the next budget, possibly maybe the one after that with interest. Um, it may be that the next budget, it would be too harmful to the economy to start clawing it back with big tax rises, but possibly the one after that. Um, I would also say if you're interested in keeping up with the, the COVID measures and assistance out there, follow us on social media. Or if you want to email Tina at our office, um, we do send out very regular email updates. Um, so please do feel free to email Tina and say, could you add us to your mailing list, please? <laughs> so that's it from me. I've put their questions. I believe the Exeter City Council will be holding a live Q&A on the 19th of November and I'll see you then.